Welcome to Think About It. I'm Sylvia Henderson, your host, and I invite you to tune in, take what you see and hear, and, well, think about it. Today's program is, we're going to talk about a true personal and business success story. My guest today is Terry Haas, and she is the owner and, you know, when I think of restaurants, I call them proprietors, but she's the owner of Sullivan Steakhouse and I'm sure there's more to that title, but we'll come to that shortly. But Sullivan Steakhouse in Laurel, Maryland. Let me give you a little bit of an, a bio about Terry, and then we'll launch right into the program. Terry Haas is an entrepreneur, a working mom, and a current owner of Sullivan Steak and Beverage Company. How darn it. There you go. I wrote it right there. It's a neighborhood eatery just south of Laurel, Maryland on Route 198. Terry started in the restaurant business 30 years ago as a bartender. Through frugal living, careful planning, and special gifts at arm twisting, <laughs> Terry turned her bartending tips into a home for her children and the ownership of a friendly place serving good food and drink. By keeping her goals simple and clear, Terry accomplishes good things in life. At Sullivan's, Terry adds a warmth and a welcoming atmosphere for every patron. It's as comfortable as that, that famous other bar on television that brings cheers to television households. Terry even greets everyone by name when they enter. She makes you want to be there, and she makes you want to come back soon. So I'm thrilled to have Terry with me today to share with you what I believe to be a true personal and entrepreneurial success story. Terry. Welcome to Think Hi, About Sophia. It. How are you? All right. Told you Thank that was you. going to be a surprise intro. <laughs> <laughs> you had no idea what I was going to say. That's okay. You did great. You did great. <laughs> the first question I usually ask my guests is to tell about their personal, their personal story, how they got to where they are, whatever that topic happens to be. But since today's program is all about basically your personal success story, I'm just going to start out with... Before the details, why a restaurant? I mean, there's a million other businesses, some easier. So what got you interested in owning a restaurant? Well, I started off when I was um, very young, working at a restaurant back home in Connecticut, where I'm from, and loved it because I had the one-on-one uh, -on -one with people okay. all the time. And I like to make people laugh. And... It, it got in my blood. I could make people laugh, and I could go home with money at the end of the day. I had tips in my pocket. Oh. And As they say, laughing all the way to the bank. Yes. <laughs> yes, and I just, I loved it, and I just kept with it. Uh, in the back of my mind, I thought, okay, I'm going to do something else when I get older, go to school. And one job led to another job, and I decided to just, th this was my niche. I liked okay. being in the restaurant business. And in my younger days, never thought in a million years that I would own a restaurant. Uh -huh. The thought probably didn't cross my mind until I started working at the restaurant that I'm at now, and I've been there for close to 30 years. Did you um, want to own, did you have any kind of an entrepreneurial streak in you? Like, nothing. I want to have a business? No. Young? No. Boy, no. Oh boy, this popped I in. I was always a, um, a leader as far as, because I was wanted to make people laugh all the time so I would do something crazy and people would come to me so as far as that goes yeah okay. leader in a sense but owning my own business no I didn't have any college background um, you know words with more than five letters and it scared me so I was like nope this is this is what I love I can be in the restaurant business and there's a lot of successful people out there that have been in the restaurant business their whole life and have done well okay now, you started out as a bar, tending the bar, in, a rest, in this restaurant anyway. How did you know you were ready to own the establishment? I mean, it's a huge undertaking. 
And I know we often, and a lot of times we often get bogged down by the what ifs when there's a big undertaking. Somehow you got past the what ifs and you got unstuck, if you even got stuck, and you helped, and you grabbed an opportunity that presented itself to you. So how did you keep it from passing you by? Well, I think one thing that um, made me want to do it a lot is, is my fiancé, John. Um, I have been very lucky. There's a lot of people out there that have um, a great relationship, but I have a perfect relationship. He um, supports me in ev everything I do, whether it be good or bad. He's right there for me. Okay. And um, about six years ago, within a six-month period, I had um, colon cancer a knee replacement and kind of a heart attack. And I went through all that and John was by my side and I think it was, I, I went through that, was cured and it was the right time in my life. My son um, had made a decision to um, go into the military and this was, of course was a couple of years after we got into the restaurant okay. but everything was falling into place and I said you know um, the people that I worked for wanted to retire that place was my life I knew it inside and out and I said I can do this if I've conquered these other things wow, really I I'm going to buy a restaurant I'm gonna buy this restaurant and you know I ran into a couple of things that I thought oh, okay we're not gonna be able to do this and and then it ended up working out and wow I thought well if I can I got rid of those things I can own a restaurant I can do this if well, I can do those other things I can definitely buy a re own a restaurant <laughs> well you know that might lead into this you know one of the things that we hear from our friends or relatives a lot of times is it in the name of wanting us to not get hurt now because you've been through some stuff so the hurt is probably secondary at this point but one of the things we hear is you know, are you sure about doing that or or think carefully do you really want to get into that you know they say that out of the out of caring for us but so I can only imagine the warnings you got from people I mean we all know that ooh, owning a restaurant's tough how'd you get rid of those voices well and prob probably the the first person that kept saying to me do you really want to do this <laughs> was my Is lawyer. You, oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say yourself. No. No, I, I wanted to do it all along. I thought I knew what I was getting into. Okay. I, you know, working at the restaurant every day, um, I saw everything that was going on. I said, piece of cake. Okay. I can do this. But there are a lot of things that people don't see right. that, um, you know, um, I made it through, um, and it got scary. It got scary because uh -huh. you are now um, owning this restaurant, and I have 15 employees. Okay. And those employees mean the world to me. And my goal every day is, to, no matter what it takes, to keep those doors open and make sure they get a paycheck and make sure that, you know, our town has a, a great cheers type bar to go to every day and I think everybody feels that way about it and I keep trying to maintain that feeling and I've run across uh, up against a lot of obstacles um, and have I gone home and cried and has John been there saying you know you're a fighter honey you'll you'll get through this yeah and then another day comes and we get through another day and um, that's kind of how I've been doing it you know all right, and then, yeah, if you keep your goal, I would think, in front of you, forget about all the naysayers, as they mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it's been uh, um, an exciting journey, and I've, uh, probably my thing that I enjoy the most is the people that I get to meet on a daily basis. I mean, the, um, the personalities, the different, one extreme to the next. I can only imagine. Oh, yeah, right. and, and I... Um, my motto, I guess, is I hear it all, I see it all, and I tell nothing. Because you, <laughs> when you're in this business, people tend to talk to you about everything that's going on in their life. You know, their girlfriends, their boyfriends, their wives, their kids, the, everything. 
And I enjoy that. I enjoy being able to not only give them good food, make them laugh, give them some comfort in, you know, whatever um, I can give them to console them and make their day, you know, nicer. You know, their problems don't go away when they leave, right. but maybe I gave them an opportunity to feel a little bit better, you know. I'm about to ask you to start out on your personal journey. And we might end up having to break in between, but still. Okay. I want to make sure that you share. I mean, what, how did you start? What, take us through making this a reality today. Um, probably has a lot to do with my parents, the way they raised me. And again, um, when I was young, I was 15 years old, started my first, got my first job at a, a little fast food store in a, in a department store, me and my, uh, uh, my best friend, and I was making $75 a week. And I'd go home, and my mother said to me, okay, you're working. You need to give us $25 a week for room and board. And I was devastated. I was like, my parents are going to charge me rent? I'm their little girl with the canopy bed and <laughs> daddy's okay. little girl. And okay. I did it. And years went by, and the whole time I worked, I always gave mom and dad money and um, okay. wow. I um, then um, had an opportunity to move to Maryland and I moved here with a boyfriend at the time and we came here and he took care of me so I again I didn't have to support myself he took care of me my parents took care of me and he had an opportunity to move back home and I said to him well I'm not going to go with you I said I'm going to stay in Maryland I want to make it on my own. And he said, well, you don't have a job. I said, you know what? My parents took great care of me. You've taken care of me. I'm never going to grow up okay. unless I throw myself out there. My mother was heartbroken. She was scared. She was like, oh, my God. And from that point, I had him turn the, rent, uh, the, the, the apartment over into my name. I went out and got a job. I got a credit card. And I, I started saving my money. And I came up with the... My little crazy envelope idea, where envelope I idea. started working, and I saw how how much fun I was having, and I said, "Well, I'm not going to be one of these people that works for tips every day and has nothing. I'm going to save my money okay. because I want to own something one day." And my goal was a home at the time. So every night I came home and I would take twenty dollars from my day and I would put it in an envelope and I would hide it in my drawer. And that built up and built up, and I stuck with it. And um, after 13 years, I had enough money to go and buy a house. And that's how I bought my house. And there was an article in the paper. It was called The House That Tips Bought. And I was very, very proud of that. Wow, okay. And, and from there, I just um, stuck by that. And I, I tried. I taught my, talked to my son about doing that. And... You know, the responsibility of having money and um, putting it aside. And I even tried a couple of the bartenders that I work with at the restaurant. I helped them. Um, you know, one of them was a single mom. And I said, just go home every night. Even if you can't do 20, put 10. Yeah. Because it, the first night it, it's only $10, but the next night it's 20. Then it's 30. Wow. And it helps. And that's kind of what worked for me. And it still does to this day. No, let me tell you, still the, to this day, the way we are in the economy, it would work for a lot of people oh, if yes. they would follow that advice. Yes, and I'm very, um, very, very budget-minded, and I'm extremely budget-minded in the restaurant. And uh, you know, I've had some some issues at the restaurant that have set me back majorly. And were there days that I wanted to throw in the towel and say I, I'm not going to do this anymore? Many, um, but because I had a lot of strength from my fiance John, my son, um, people that you find out in this business who your friends are, and I stick with it every day. And we're going to find every out every day. And we're going to find out more about how you stick with it right after a short break. So with that, we'll be right back.
to be perfect to be a perfect parent. When you adopt a child from foster care, just being there makes all the difference. Hello, welcome back to Think About It. I'm Sylvia Henderson, your host. And today we are talking about what I consider to be a true personal and professional success story. My guest is Terry Haas. Terry, welcome back. Thank you, Sylvia. And to make sure folks know, you are the proprietor, the owner of Sullivan Steak and Beverage Company. Or, yes. All right, you got in, it. Law, in Laurel, Maryland. And yes. we'll tell at the very end how to get to you and how to find you. Before we took the break, you talked about being a saver and building your savings up in order to achieve a couple of goals. The house, buying the restaurant. I want you to talk a little bit more about how in the world, in a day where day and age where people are so used to buying what they can't afford through credit cards, through you know, every means necessary in order to get what they shouldn't be getting, how in the world can we do that today? I mean, can, we, can you still put $20 in an envelope if you brought home 80 or 100 I would still do it. Okay. I would still do it. I, um, I don't know. It's it's. Um, I've done it for so long, and it it. If somebody tried to do it, they would see how easy. You know that, like I said, that first mm -hmm. night, it's kind of tough, because you're like, oh, I could use that twenty dollars for something. Mm -hmm. But if you just stick with it. Um, you know, nowadays with, with people putting their money in the bank and investments and people are losing their money everywhere. You know, you're not making any interest when you put your $20 in an envelope under your mattress, but you've got your $20. But you know and, it's there. <laughs> yes. And no one's going to take it from you, you know. Um, and if, you know, that's almost like the old school. You don't see people doing that kind of thing anymore. That's right. But maybe if That's a couple right. of people thought about doing that, they'd see how quickly they could save money. I mean, yeah. I'm talking when I saved mine, you know, 13 years, and I had $18,000. I remember when I was in the corporate world uh, and getting a salary, how every time I got a raise, I still made sure I lived off of what I was making prior to the raise and then banked that differential, banked that raise. And, and as an owner right now, I can tell you that I am still making the same pay that I started making 30 years ago when I started working at this restaurant. I've not given myself a raise or, you know, I make sure that my employees get taken care of, our food gets taken care of, okay. and the bills at the restaurant get taken care of. Okay. And I'm okay with that. You know, John and I live a very... Um, comfortable, low-keyed life. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm, I'm lucky to have a wonderful person like him because, you know, if I open, fix a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and noodles and noodle soup, he thanks me and says dinner was great. Oh, and we're okay with that. And that, you know, enables us to, you know, we don't need the big fancy things. We're yes. very content with that. And he loves the fact, and he'll tell anybody, there's nobody more budget-minded than my Terry. <laughs> and I just, you know, it's in my blood, and I stick with it, and I, and I advise people to do that. You know, if they can do that, it, it worked great, and, it, and, it, and I think it would work great for them, too. People are clearly important in your life. Been, it sounds like they've been important to you for your whole life. You know, the maxim that we hear a lot is, no person is an island. I know they say no man, but, you know, we're not going to say that. No person is an island. I'm sure you've had people in your life that have both contributed and helped you in your success and not. Um, just what advice have you got for, for, pe for us, especially in a, in a world where the people connection just seems to be not there anymore as we're so used to thumbing and you know, walking around with our heads down. And, and in the restaurant, I'm sure you see people who are there supposedly with each other and they're on their little pads doing things that, without talking. Some advice on just how do, we, how do we let the right people in? How do we know when it's time to let people go so that we can keep that support network? That Well, 
that might be a hard question for someone like me because one thing is is my downfall is I trust everyone everyone and I feel if someone is nice to me they're being sincere because I'm sincere there's nothing phony about me um, when I give I give it all and I've been crushed crushed by a lot of people because I would say to myself I can't believe that they did that I thought they were my friend and the one regret that I do have in this business is um, I'm you know I know this is all about being a, a owner of a restaurant and which is I love being an owner of a restaurant but I don't think I'm tough enough to be an owner of a restaurant <laughs> because I'm all about, uh, you know, I'm a giver and I'm a giver. And, and there's, there's sometimes you run across people that want you to do this and they want you to do that. And in the business, you can't do it okay. because I'm behind the okay. scene now. Yep. You know, before I was the bartender all the time, I didn't see the behind the scene yeah. things on how to run a restaurant. And unfortunately, um, you have to make some decisions in this business mm -hmm. that hurt you and hurt the people that you've been taking care of for years but you have to make those decisions and some of the things that I've done um, at the time I was devastated I because I didn't want to hurt anybody sure yeah. and then a month later I find out you know what I did make the right decision See that. And those people realize I made the right decision and it's all about business mm -hmm. See that's, and you yeah. and I have I've had to learn how to separate friendship from business. Huge. It, and that is. Huge. That's very huge, Sylvia. And, and, and I've had a tough time with that. But as the time goes on, it's been five years now, and I've gotten tougher. Okay. And do I still go home and go cry oh, a little bit, hey. saying, you know, I might have hurt somebody or somebody hurt me? I do. But I go back into the restaurant and say, it's all about business. It's not, yep. I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm here to put out a good product, a good restaurant, and and I just, I tell myself that. And so I, it gets me through, um, gets me through, you know. I think a lot of the viewers can relate to that. It just, they don't have to own a restaurant. If you're a manager in a company, um, a lot of entrepreneurs, solo business owners like I am, I'm thinking of, I need people. I need to hire someone to help me grow my business horrifies me because you know, I was once a manager and I know what I went through in managing people uh, but you're right you've got to make those decisions uh, and like you said the, the huge one is keeping friendship separate from business because oh, that'll yeah. get you as they oh, say yeah oh yeah the, the other thing is you've known you've you've you made the decision it's time to let go and you let other people into your life, that's the positive part, in order to then move on and get past the, the stuff. Oh, yeah. I have to make some changes, mm -hmm. and, and um, those changes hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd be worried about you if it didn't hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Because I just, um, because of the kind of person that I am, you know, I don't like hurting anybody. Um, and nobody, nobody wants anybody to say anything bad about them, you know, because you think you're doing the right thing. So that's been a tough thing for me. But um, when I made this decision and then let whatever decision I made take place and the restaurant's running, then I go, okay, okay, it's, it's not as bad. It's okay. not as bad. Um, that's probably you know, the toughest thing I've had to do in my whole life because I've always been a softie and I've always been a pushover and I've always been, you know, a doer. Yeah. And um, so all of a sudden you're in your 50s <coughs> and um, you have to become tougher. Mm -hmm. um, it, was a, it was a whole new thing for me. You know, it's a whole new thing for me because 50 years you're always the softie yeah. and then all of a sudden you've got to be the tough guy and that's it's been that's probably the hardest thing I've uh, I've had to do um, but I love 
my restaurant. I love going in. There's pe there's people that say to me, Terry, you've been doing this for how many years? You don't ever get tired of going into that restaurant. And I say, you know what? I don't. I don't ever. Every day is a new experience. New people, new experience. Um, Tell us a little bit about the... So what stuff happens there? I mean, you, oh yeah, my got, God, what stuff happens day. there? Every night, so I can... Yeah, yeah, my, let's um, talk about some fun. Well, <laughs> every Saturday night we have a, uh, bands. Okay. Um, and we, we kind of cater to the 30 and up crowd. Um, nice classic rock. Okay. Um, Friday nights we have a DJ with karaoke who, he's phenomenal, gets the crowd going. Um, every Thursday we do two for one burgers, you buy a burger, you get a burger free. Wednesday night we do live trivia, we, we have a DJ that comes in and people get into teams and they call, he calls out questions and then you win prizes. Oh, okay. Um, Sunday of course is football and then we are getting ready to relaunch our new menu. Um, and this coming weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Black Friday, um, all our new menu items, all the new ones are going to be half price for all three days. Wow. So if you come in, you can go on our website, and they have a coupon on there. You print out that coupon, bring it in, and the whole weekend you can get everything half price. And so when, you, when you have specials, because this will air probably after, right. after this special, right. but uh, for anything going on, the website... That oh, definitely. Find yep. out is yep. Sullivan's Steak and Beverage dot com, and we have a Facebook page and uh -huh. um, Twitter and all that, so uh -huh. um, they can find us and all. And we have a wonderful guy that works on all our, um, you know, all our websites, and he puts everything out there: the bands, uh, the menu. Um, okay, we offer good. carry out, and um, you know, there's other restaurants in town. There's lines out the door come over to Sullivan's because we can get you right in there. Great. And you're located at 198 and I know across from the Amish market yes. in Laurel. Yes. This is probably yep. the most prevalent thing that yep. mm -hmm. I hear about. Right there on the corner of 198 and 197. Okay. So. And people will walk in and will see you. You're right up front. Right there. Right there. One last word. What, what one last what would If you had a minute, which we have, <laughs> to tell some last motivating something to viewers to keep going don't let the downs keep you down what would you say well you know a lot of people say follow your dreams and um, I would say that I mean there's gonna be this was my dream and there was a lot of things in there that made me say I don't want to do this anymore but I stuck to my guns okay. and People should, if they really believe in something, you know, not everything's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You just go for it. Keep fighting for it. If, you, if, if it's something that you believe in, it's something that you want, there's always a way to do it. Just keep fighting for it. And that's what we do. Terry, we will keep fighting for you. And I expect everybody to come stampeding into Sullivan's once they see the show. Thank you so much for being my Thank guest you. today. Thank you. This and awesome. and with that, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you visit Sullivan's. I'm not supposed to shout out a specific business, but hey, you know. Um, I'm glad you joined us on this true personal success story and business success story with Terry Haas and Sullivan's Restaurant. And until next time, I invite you to tune in, take what you see and hear, and, well, think about it. I'm Sylvia Henderson, your host and make a great day.